of the Midway, the 1985 Chicago Bears, Marty Itziak. Thank you, Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. <clears throat> Show of hands around the room. Who's still upset about the infamous double doink? The Bears losing by a missed field goal. I am too. Well, I hope the next few minutes are going to bring a smile to your face because I'm not going to talk about that game, but I'm going to talk about a season that uh, most people in the room should be old enough to remember, and that is the 1985 Bears season where they won the Super Bowl, the last time the Bears won the Super Bowl. But how did they get there? The story of how the Bears got to New Orleans in 1986 is a really interesting one, and there's some parallels to the current team now. So to get to that point, we turn the clock back to the end of the 1982 season. The Bears just had a dismal season. There is no way that they would even think of being anywhere near playoff contention at the time. George Hallis had fired their coach and now had a decision to make. Where do we go from here? Who's going to lead the Bears to prominence? Hallis was the coach the last time the Bears won a championship in 1963. On that team was a very good tight end by the name of Mike Ditka. Ditka was with the Bears for a number of seasons and then Hallis traded him to the Philadelphia Eagles because they got into a contract dispute. Ditka famously said that Hallis was so stingy he liked to throw around nickels like manhole covers. They didn't get along after he was traded. He spent some time in Philadelphia and then went on to Dallas, retired as a cowboy, and then went on to be an assistant coach for the Cowboys for a number of years studying under the great Tom Landry. After being with the Cowboys for a number of years there as assistant coach, he started to think to himself, I'd like to be a head coach someday. I'd like to repair this rift with George. I'm going to write him a letter. So he wrote him a letter basically stating that if the Bears job were to ever open up again, he'd like to be considered, even though he knows that they didn't see eye to eye when he left Chicago, but he understands the fierce tradition of the Bears and how important it is for Hallis in Chicago to see the Bears on top again. George took that letter to heart. And when it came time in 1982 to look for a coach, he called Mike up. He said, get on the next plane. I want to talk to you about our opening. So they met in his apartment, and basically hammered out a deal for him to become the next coach. Famously, Hallis asked him, Mike, what's your philosophy in coaching? Ditko looked at him and smiled and said, Coach, what are you talking about? My philosophy is the same as yours. I want to kick the other team's ass. And with that, a new coach was announced. George was so happy to be there at the press conference to announce that Mike Ditko is the next coach of the Chicago Bears. However, the players weren't so enthused. Mike Singletary, upon hearing the news, said, Mike Ditka, are you crazy? That guy throws clipboards around. So it was going to be a little bit of a sales job on Mike's part to win the team over. We flash forward to his first meeting with the team. One of the players had showed up late. He immediately had him cut. And then he walked into the room, scanned his players, and said this, guys, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is, in three years, if you all listen to me, if you come in here and you're dedicated to being the best bear you can be, in three years, we will go to the dance. We'll go to the Super Bowl. Bad news is, 
Some of you won't be here to see it. Already one won't, because I just cut him. But that's just the way it goes. For all of you that believe in the mission of bringing the bears back to the top, stay with me and we'll do it. <clears throat> Mike was correct in his prediction. In 1985, the Bears were the most dominant team in the NFL, posting a record of 15 and one. In the playoffs that year, against the New York Giants and the LA Rams, they did not score a single point against the Bears. And in the Super Bowl, Against the Patriots, they scored, the Patriots scored the first three points of the game. How did the rest of the game go? The Bears outscored them 46 to seven, leading to a very memorable hoisting of both Mike Ditka and defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan off of the field. George knew the coach that was going to be the right man for the job, and Mike Ditka made sure on his promise. They did go to the dance. And to this day, the 85 Bears are one of the greatest teams ever to play football. Thank you very much.